Welcome to Arcade Attack. A retro gaming podcast for up to four players. Welcome, listeners, to another Arcade Attack podcast. I'm Dylan. I'll be your host for the evening. I am with Adrian. Oh, yeah. And a very confused Rob. I'm no more confused than usual. <laughs> well, it's re- relatively confused. The reason he's confused is because I haven't really told him what this podcast is going to be about. No, Dylan's been mysterious in the same way that uh, your partner goes, there's something we need to talk about later on. You go, what? And they go... It, like we'll talk you, about it later yeah. on. It's never that's it's never like, a good thing when you they know do when that. Apollo <laughs> says you're after this. You owe me a favor, and it's like what favor? I t- I tell you later. Ding ding. <laughs> that's quite a nice little segue. So basically, what we're going to talk about today, because you know we we're, we're retro gamers to a certain extent. And we talk a lot about consoles, don't we? We talk about the Mega Drive, mm-hmm. we talk about the SNES, we talk about that hardware quite a lot. One thing we don't really talk about are the alternate ways to play game cartridges and ROMs and things, do we? We never really talk about it. So I've been, thanks to friend of the show and listener of the show, I've been fortunate enough to acquire... Something called a Mega SG. Rob, have you heard of a Mega SG? No, and I, but please tell me about the Mega <laughs> SG. Um, the Mega SG is a product made by a company called Analog. Uh, I'm surprised, cause you're quite, you're quite an avid Guardian reader, aren't you? Um, I don't pay for it. Well, it's a, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It probably is my, but, I guess, online paper of choice. Yeah. yeah, why? I'm pretty sure they gave it five out of five or something approaching that. What it is, is a reversed engineered Mega Drive that is HD compatible, multi-region, and compatible with a few certain other peripherals mm. over there. One of which uh, I can see is resting underneath it. One of which you can see <laughs> resting underneath it. It's sitting quite nicely on top of my original Mark I Mega CD. So, anyway, we'll get to that in a little while. So we're going to talk about some of the other, or I'm going to briefly kind of waz through some of the options that other people have if they want to get into retro gaming, essentially. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. Sounds good? I like it, yeah. Sounds good? Because we haven't done it. We haven't done it before. And it, there's, there's just there's little things kind of been nagging at me that I need to, you know, I need to kind of put this to bed. It's going to be cathartic for you, Dylan. I need to cathart, dude. Whenever, <laughs> whenever I do a podcast, it's all about a good cathart. So it's going to lead up to that, and then we'll finish it with a... Mega SG review, and I will let Adrian and Rob have a little go on it to see what they think. So it's like a real time, this is a real time thing now in the podcast. First time we've, it's the first time we've done that? First, first time, time we've time, done it? First time. First time we've done that. So, you know, it's, it's exciting. I'm excited. Everyone at home, I hope, is a little bit excited. Anyway, so it all started. So when, like, the, the arcade attack thing started in earnest about 2014, right? Yeah, we've heard the story. Your mum chucked away the magazines. What did it? Well, no, because <laughs> mum, ch- <laughs> mum chucked away the mags a couple of years before that, and that's why I started the Dylan's Arcade thing, and then it kind of got to Arcade Attack. How did I? How did I play? The, you know, the games that I reviewed for Dylan's Arcade and sort of the first um, iteration of Arcade Attack. How did I play those games? You built your own Mega Drive out of wood and uh, plastic and glass mm-hmm. and whatever you had lying around the house, and you put the game cartridges in, but the game cartridges wouldn't play, so you had to try and reconstruct it from memory. And then eventually you just thought, this is just taking far too much effort. I'm sure I can just buy a, a Mega Drive. So that's what you did. You bought a Mega Drive, and you actually played the games on that. Then you got a Retro Trio, and you thought, like, I, this is a three-in-one thing. I can play lots of things. Is that basically what happened? I prefer, I prefer Rob's story to the actual story because <laughs> half of it is actually true so what i really I'd hope is, it's the half i'm thinking of what i've done is and adrian is actually really responsible for this is i used to play a lot of old games on emulators mm. and i only found out about emulators through this guy so back in back in the day i think i wanted to i only had one one of the game boy pokemons but then adrian was like 
Why don't you just download an emulator and then you can play all the Pokemons on a PC? And you said it in that accent. You were like, you can play all the Pokemons. And I was like, okay, I can play all the Pokemons. It makes me sound wiser so you listen better. That's are, you sh- <laughs> are you sure that was Adrian, not the devil tempting you with in the form of Adrian? That's it, because there's grey areas in regards emulators and ROMs anyway. Grey legal areas. So that's how I used to play them. So we used to, you know, obviously we had our PS2s and things and we, we followed the, I think, you and me, Adrian, we pretty much followed the generations as far as the consoles yeah. are concerned, right? So it was always a good thing to pick up your old laptop or your old desktop and whack in on emulator. It was sort of like the K, the, the, what was the, Ge- the Genesis one? K something. Fusion? I, for, I forget now. All those ones, right? That's how I used to do it. I used to take my own screenshots. Yeah. Back in the days of when I used to take my own screenshots rather than steal them from Moby Games like I do now. I used to take my own like, screenshots and put it all together and that's how it used to be. I think, you know, I want to play on my telly, man. Like, I can't, like, I'm sick of this. <laughs> and just at the time I was thinking that, so this must have been late 2014, me and Rob were, um, were, were sharing the house at the time. And I was like, I really want to treat myself to this new thing that's come out. And it was called a Retro Trio. So this is Retro Bits Retro Trio console. So, what are you putting your hand up no, for? No, because before your story, can I tell you my story about emulators? Go on then. I'll Sorry, let's, let's hear it's the, funny. No, dude, we love a tangent. We Ooh, love a tangent. This was the days when the internet, like, you know, you know when you had to like, Mum, can I plug in the internet? Yeah. And she was like, it's going to cost too much money. Yeah. So what, this is really, You're I, talking I, about the dial-up days. The dial-up days. Oh my words. You can, I'm a bad person. I had loads of discs, right? You know, like PC discs. And I thought, ah, oh, I can get on the, if I plug in the internet, I can download games and the, you know, you can actually get them from the internet and get, you know, make them mm. to PC games. But I, my mum was like, you can't, you can't stop going on the internet. I actually went to the public library and the Croydon library logged into their internet and I was like, well, let's download and like Before they started blocking everything. Before they started blocking it. And I was like downloading it onto, straight onto my discs and I could play them at home. You're such a clever guy. I'm a bad boy, aren't I? You're a bad boy. the ball. These were like really old school PC sort of games, but you know what I mean? I've, I've, they were fun to play because I like felt dark such a... seed and stuff. You... Like like abandon. If it, it wasn't abandonware, was it? Because that's fine. I, I think abandonware. No, and no stuff but is fine. I used the public library. So thank you, Croydon. <laughs> oh, there you go, Croydon Library, bring, bringing it. Wait a minute. There's something I want to know, Dylan. Why don't you just use YouTube like kind of screenshots for the the pics? That's that's a good question, actually. I couldn't find a way. I think YouTube are quite savvy in how they do it. When you pause a video. You know, you've got that annoying bar at the bottom with, well, yeah. it's not, it's functional. It's got like the, the play thing in that. Yeah. It cuts off quite a lot of the image. So that, so when you pause it and kind of minimize it to try and screenshot it, you can't get a screen grab off it. That's the last time I tried. That's why. And I was like, eh. You know, but, <laughs> but now, mo- like people, lots of lovely people out there have gone on Moby games, selected the actual, like whatever, you know, cause it's, it is a perfect database of games. And just uploaded it. And all I do is do that. And at the bottom of articles, I just say, all images stolen. I mean, <laughs> taken from Moby Games. So that's what I do now. So anyway, that's that's my screenshot story. But the Retro Trio, guys. The Retro Trio. So I ordered one from... Ah, uh, game... Retro Fun Stock, wasn't it? Something. No, I didn't. I didn't order it from Fun... I've ordered other stuff from them, but I've not ordered... Didn't order that. Game... Something. Anyway... They were really bad at getting it to me because I, I ordered it. Ba, 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 ba. Actually, it was through Amazon, and it was they were a supplier on Amazon. You know, like Amazon have like the marketplace, yeah, yeah, marketplace yeah. guys, or the like guys who fulfil the orders. So I got it through Amazon, and I was like, oh, this thing took like it was meant to come like, in a couple of days, but it was around Christmas, Christmas 2014. Yeah. So it just didn't come. And I was like, oh. I am bummed out, ma'am. So I went to Amazon and I said, this thing is not coming. And so they were like, right, have a refund. And that's how I found a, a, the same thing on Amazon, but fulfilled by Tom's Retro Shack, now oh, defunct, go. unfortunately, shot. Um, it was good guy, Tom, actually. I don't know if he still listens to the show, but if he ever wants to bring up the shop again, I think that'd be a good idea. But uh, I've, got his, I've got my overdrive from him as well, which is sitting over there in the Mega SG. Anyway, I digress. I digress. So I went to, so Tom, I was like, oh, Tom, I've got this like voucher thingy from Amazon. I'm going to spend it on a retro trio with you. Can you get me soon? I really want to have a go at it. And he was like, yes. 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 And I even told him about Arcade Attack. I was like, I do Arcade Attack retro game. Like, that sounds great. 
And so then that's how we got, uh, then he like, started following us on Facebook and uh, good, good, good. So I got the retro trio. Got the retro trio. Perfect. I got it soon after you. And I said to Adrian, I said, this is worth getting. Yeah. Yeah. I said, this thing, it can play three consoles in one. I, I you don't have to get a NES, a SNES and a Mega Drive because those three are all built in there. And what I thought was really clever, I don't know if you mentioned this, the, the converter, the Mega Drive to Master the Converter works on it. Yeah. So it, I was like, I'm not sure it's going to work. I even asked on Amazon, well, this, and then there was no questions at all. And I think you said it will work. So what Retrobit did, yeah. and I read it somewhere actually before I got the console, was that they recreated the exact hardware. So it's not their own version of it. I think they pretty much just use the same stuff. So that's but how it all works. the four-player adapter doesn't work on it. The four-player adapter doesn't work on it. No, it doesn't. because That's we, true. That's the, the one that Rob lovingly bought for me that year, or the, the, the thing after... It didn't work. So that's, that's, bleh. but the Master System Converter, that one, the one that you got that's like a square, not the power basey one. Yeah. But the, not the one that sits on top of the Mega Drive one, but the other one, that works pretty good. So, so, a couple of weeks after Christmas, I got a, a package in the post. And I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Opened it up. I was like, it's about the same size as my Retro Trio box. Let's open this up. Hello, the one that game whatever had sent <laughs> that they thought was lost, they didn't have any tracking information for, arrived at my door. D- Dylan, and I'm like, I've sort of got a hooky retro trio here. What do I do with this? And it sat in my cupboard for a couple of years. Yeah. I used it to, to, to test something I'll talk about later on. Um, but other than that, it, I'm pretty, no, untouched. And I said, like, because, like, Rob, Rob was saying one year, he was like, oh, I could really do with getting on the old podcast game with you guys, didn't you, Rob? You were like, oh, I'll get on the podcast game with you guys. And we were guys. like, no, you ain't got any consoles. You're, You're not like, you ain't got no consoles. <laughs> and then I thought, bing bong. <laughs> bing bong. How can I get rid of this hooky retro trio? And. So if, if, the, if the cops come for you, it's <laughs> Rob's fingerprints, right? <laughs> it's all over it. It's all over it. I couldn't, or I didn't feel morally that I could sell it. I probably could have just flogged it on eBay. Yeah. But I feel like I morally couldn't sell it. A friend needed a console. I'm like. Yeah, a friend in need, mate. Two birds, one stone. So I said to Rob, I said, I've got this hooky retro trio. I don't think I use those actual words, but something similar. No, I, ble- you implied that it was your one that you were getting rid of because you didn't need it anymore. And when no, you passed you it I over, you were wearing gloves. And so, no, <laughs> it was all over it. I said to you it was my spare <laughs> one. I said to you it was my spare one I can't really sell. So maybe I might not go into the full, the full story. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> all, so, so the, yeah. the, before Adrian tells his story, <laughs> the point is, is that all three of us now have a retro trio. Uh-huh. Good, good, because I'm going to get your thoughts on it in a minute. But no, yeah, go on. <laughs> Once, Dylan, I ordered a Domino's pizza, right, for the family, and it about an hour went by. I was like, I rang them up. I said, Domino's, where's my pizza? Oh, oh really sorry. And then they eventually got it to me. Yeah. And I said, oh, it took a bit of time. So we just got the pizza in. Honestly, 20 minutes later, oh, hi, mate. We got you a pizza here. They gave me the other, a whole other batch of pizzas. Like, okay, thank you. And then I'm not even joking. About 30 minutes after that, they came over with more pizzas. <laughs> and by then, I was so full. I was like, mate, because I could have taken it in. They wouldn't have known. I was like, no, I don't want any more pizza. You've already given it. Take it back. So we're, so you had two retro trios. I had three, pe- three lots of pizzas coming Are you sure you weren't like Ross Geller and like one of you really fancied the girl that worked there or something? <laughs> or the guy that worked there? Do you know that gas doesn't have a smell? <laughs> the gas doesn't have a... They add the smell to gas so you know when there's a leak. Yeah. Did you know that, Rob? <laughs> I can so tell you, I can tell you, Rob looks impressed. I know this is a reference from that, but I haven't watched that episode in a long oh. time. Oh. It's a good episode because Ross is very cringy in it. So two retro uh, d- or three lots of pizzas. What's the better deal? Welcome to this week's Friends podcast. <laughs> I, if we can take a slight tangent, I don't know if Friends has really aged th- that well. I realised this a few months back going to a Friends trivia night in a pub and oh, it was awful. Oh, no. Just, uh, oh, I mean, it's great. Uh, I don't know. I just, I just think other things have aged better and i was i was vehemently defending friends two or three years ago to people who were like going oh like friends is really uh racist and like all that kind of stuff i was like it's the 90s it's the 90s man the come 90s. on let, let it go let, let it go, go, go man. there weren't even any trans characters at all before there that. no trans characters in here oh man anyway but that's... yeah i don't think it's aged well in 2020 that's it Oh, it's very 90s-y, yeah. And it's not that 
It's not that non PC. Anyway. I mean, it's not that, but I just, Ross is also the worst character in the ho- I like whole Ross. thing. I like Ross. Ross is like my favorite character. He's the villain of Friends. He is the villain of Friends, but that's a complete, let's not tangent there. Yeah, we'll come let's back to that. Tangent, back to let's the pizza tangent. story, back to the Let's not tangent there. So, Retro Trio, you can scart it into your HD telly. And work it yep. great. Did you get the same pizzas again, yes. or were they different no, pizzas? No, it was all the same. It's like, it's... Stop talking about the pizza. <laughs> retro pizza. I mean, retro trio. Retro trio. Adrian, thoughts on retro trio? It was perfect, because, as you know, Dylan, mate, I got all my consoles back from my parents. I just couldn't get the Mega Drive working. Mega Drive 2, yeah. it, was, it seemed busted. Yeah. And I was like, I've got all these Mega Drive games. And I've got all these Master System games. I, I know the Retro doesn't play Master Games technically, but mm-hmm. the Masters, it was a Masters and one, it didn't properly connect and stuff. And I was like, grrr, I've got, I've got some SNES games as well, but the SNES yeah. wasn't, you know, I didn't have a SNES. So I thought, Dylan's got a Retro Trio. This can play. They sound good. Dylan, <laughs> d- 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 and it, you know, and also, I, I, as soon as I got the Retro Trio, Dylan, I thought, I'm going to buy a NES game. Not because I, you know. Just because you could. because I could. Yeah. So I got the original Mario, just because just I could. Just because you could. I'm a bad man. boy, you know. It is. It is. It kind of, it kind of sparked my collecting of cartridges again. Mm. Cause I had a, a few kind of lying around. I, I, obviously I had my, my master system games that I treasured from since I was a kid, but I never really, it, it was the thing that kind of triggered me into kind of collecting again. So retro bit deserve a lot of credit for putting this thing together. The, the main pros for yeah. me are the fact that you can play apart from a Famicom. You can play any any kind of any game on any region on yeah, those on those consoles. Clever. There's a little switch at the front of the kind of the hidden, like, well, not really hidden now because you've got to put it, your, mm. your controllers in. But in that there, there's a little region switch. So if a, a cartridge doesn't work, if you try it on a different region, eh, more than often it'll work. <laughs> uh, the pads are built up, uh, not built. They're uh, designed around the SNES pad, mm. which makes sense because the SNES has the most buttons and yeah. it doesn't feel as nice as a SNES pad. But not, not if you bad. had a six-button joypad for the Mega Drive. Yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. like the pads. You and your six-button The pads button were quite pads. cheap, weren't they? I have to say. I didn't. The pads... Well, no, but that... <laughs> you can use original pads on it as yeah, well. True. So you can actually... It's not only got the, the nine-pin connector for those and the Mega Drive and the Master System ones. It's also got ports for NES... Controllers and also and also SNES controllers. It's a fantastic console for getting people into yeah. retro gaming. That's why I think it's the sort of the biggest, would, the biggest thing about it. Would you agree, Dylan? It, it's not. It does look a bit cheap. It looks a tad cheap. I quite like the red and black. It's like mm. got like a kind of red and black. Yeah, kind of thing Ugh, there, red and black it? console. I love red and black, <laughs> dude. Oh, well, it's a charcoal red grey console. That's shouldn't like. shouldn't it be white like a to- like a toilet or a dentist's office? <laughs> yeah, so we can just fit into a dentist's office. Look, I, I I think it was very good. It just didn't look the bee's knees. So the actual console or the output? The output looked brilliant. Uh, it was it did what I had it did what it had to do. But as soon as I could replace it with a real, real Mega Drive, I did. As soon as I could replace it with um um. You know, I've got the SNES Mini now, for example. Do you know what I mean? I don't. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about mini I, consoles. I can't put it in, in the shelf anymore. Yeah. So, well, okay. Um, Rob, what, what do you think of the, re- the Retro Trio? Um, I liked it. Like, I mean, I think obviously the drawback is you have to buy each game individually, and that's not cheap these days. No. But I think in terms of the actual kind of function, if you have an existing game library, mm-hmm. it's definitely, I think, a good thing to go for. You don't need all three consoles. Obviously, you do miss the functionality. Of the four, but the four player adapter, mm-hmm. unless you have like a, one of those carts like Micro Machines 2 where you have the actual plug things in it. I mm-hmm. think that's really the only major drawback, mm-hmm. I'd say. Um, it was the console used for our first sort of yeah. retro gaming tournament thing. We've had about six or seven now of those, but it was yeah. the first one, wasn't it? Because I've got just everyone around them. Well, yeah. well, I have one too. All in right, fact, I think, did I come second in that, the last one? Yes, no, right. I did. I came second by really? a point. Yeah, I beat you by a point. Man, I got you. Bought, t- you beat me with one second. One second. I, I took it's a, hard for a man like me to take. <laughs> I took a I took a picture of it. I'll show you. But yeah, I was we, like, I beat man, Rob. We did a, of, um, for my birthday. We did a retro gaming tournament. We played some weird games, didn't we? And uh, yeah, thanks for that, mate. Six events. I got two first, second, and third. And I didn't even sit, play second. I know, dude. Yeah, I finished second. Yeah. Well, do you know what I think? That's Adrian's calculations. So you know, I was a bit drunk towards the end. So <laughs> yeah. well, do you know what I think? I think if Adrian really was a bad boy, he wouldn't have to keep reminding us about it every five minutes. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm singing again. Right, so, 
Retro Trio. So Rob likes it. Did you guys notice anything about the actual video outputs of it, say, in comparison to a retro console on a CRT? It didn't look as sharp as I remembered. Right. And maybe it was my imagination back when I was a kid. I was like, this doesn't, when I was playing Earthworm Gym, I was like, mm. this game used to be amazing to the eye. I was like, it looks mm. a little bit blurry. Maybe mm. that's, uh, cause you're watching on a new style TV yeah, in the same way that, um, yeah. like when CDs first came out and they hadn't been remastered, they sounded much more quieter than actual kind of records. It wasn't until the, the wave of remasters where they actually sounded kind of comparable. Still not as good as vinyl records, but, um, you know, in terms of sound quality, like at least comparable, you didn't feel like you were missing a lot. Yes. Same thing, ready with the first when DVDs first came out. There were a lot of kind of films. Uh, if you watch stuff like Reservoir Dogs, like uh, as per if you're used to watching on video, uh, if you watch it like the early kind of DVD edition of it, it just looks so cheap and awful. It actually mm. looks like a stage play yeah. because it actually it tries to sharpen up the original colors of the film. Probably looks a bit worse than the old slightly. Blurry, yeah, you need yeah. that kind of, kind of that blurry, remastered kind of resyncing yeah. process. Which I hope brings us on to what you were going to say Remastered next. Remastered resyncing processes, Rob. Yeah. Well, the, I, I had a couple of issues with the output of the Retro Trio for the Mega Drive. So this is, I was on, I was using my dad's old HD Ready TV. HD so Ready. One of his sort of bin offs. So it wasn't <laughs> even like a, I think it must have, must have just, maybe just managed 720, 720p. So I had it on there and the Mega Drive output was pretty good. If you put it in 4.3, Aspect ratio, it all looks fine. It's hard, a little bit blurry in places. It's not horrendous. The NES output is slightly worse. Uh, I think some of the colors kind of blur into each other like they don't do on the NES and the CRT. And then the SNES output, and that's why I had to get the one I had for you out, was so blurry. It comes with it. So it's composite out, SCART, with a SCART adapter, yeah. and it's got an S video cable. It was, with, when the S video cable was plugged in, it improved the NES and the, the Mega Drive picture. But for some reason, the SNES picture looked bloody awful. I don't swear much. That was a slight swear. Yeah, yeah, family it show. It was. Mate. I was thinking like, what the hell is this? A SNES? That, this is not why I remember playing like Street Fighter Turbo like on my on, on my cousin's SNES. No way is More this like correct. Street Fighter Blurbo. I was a <laughs> like, Street Fighter Blurbo. There he is. So I was like, this can't be right. So that's why I got the other one, and I thought. Oh, maybe my one's a bit faulty. Maybe I can just switch in the hooky one and just like, oh, I've only got one retro trio, but no, exactly the same. So if you guys uh, pick up a SNES cartridge, Rob, and have a look, and you'll see what I mean. So what the the one? Yes, yeah, so I'll spend money on a SNES cartridge to see how awful it looks it. on the retro trio. I'll give you a SNES cartridge for the love of God. I'll give you something like <laughs> Super Putty that's rubbish or that's Bubsy. Super- I'll give you Bubsy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you, sorry Todd, I know, I know Todd, Todd Topload is, is, is grimacing at me right now, mate. But I'm gonna give, Bubsy. I'm gonna give Rob my Bubsy game, just to spite you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, so that, that, that kind of main, the main floor of it kind of made me think, ah, oh, I could really do with like seeing this a bit better and finding some other ways to play video games. Um, one other thing, the EverDrive, sitting proudly on there, uh, didn't some ROMs even when you switched the regions on the Retro Trio would say this is only playable on the American Genesis or whatever, yeah. and it would be set to American Genesis on the thing. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't the the science behind the Retro Trio not perfect, but I don't know. You know, they discontinued it a long time ago. Maybe not a lot of people have them. Maybe maybe our Retro Trios will grow in will grow Isn't in price. A- Dylan, wasn't there a retro kind of five that you could put in the Game Boy games as well? That... Oh, oh, sorry. I love that. It's like you just preempted what I was going to say. <laughs> so I think one, I think there was a HD version of the Retro Trio. Don't know it. We don't own that, do we? Don't own it. Don't even know it's any good. But the main, the main one around that time, they were kind of released around the same time, was something called the Retron Five. That's it. The Retron Five. So the Retro Trio plays cartridges as. The console's playing, right? The retro, the Retron 5 does not. <laughs> so what it does is it has a lot more inputs for consoles, but it dumps the, um, the game to its memory and then it kind of plays it from that. So what you what it's got actually has got a load of emulators built into it. So it's a uh. bit of a cheat, really. It's not like, like a retro trio 
was like that console we dreamed of when we were kids, the kind of the mashup of Mega Drive SNES. We always do that, generally. We did, we dreamt it. And we think, this is never gonna happen. This will never happen. It did happen. Like, and it has happened multiple times. Action 52 guy, Vince, he wanted to make that, that console. He's clever man. He wants to make the SNES. Clever crazy man. Like Marvel and DC and, uh, never the streams shall cross. Although actually, in the 90s, there was a big crossover between Marvel and DC and a lot of joint stories. I think but if you get, if, I think kind if, of thing. if the lawyers bang their heads together enough, I think never they'll, cross they'll the streams. Out. Never cross the streams unless you've got to beat Zool. <laughs> See, Rob, you can't even blame me for that. Or Gorza. Blame I him for, now. Blame him for what? He said the Z word. Yeah, but he wasn't talking about the awful ant ninja. Context, ah, <laughs> in your face, Adrian. A different Zool. Context, context, context. So you, I, you had to bring in Zool again, didn't you, Adrian? You, you just <laughs> can't help yourself. All right. I can't speak for the Retro Trio, but I know that several of our listeners got into retro gaming because of the Retron 5. Yeah. Do you want to know how many consoles it can actually take? So this is... Can I have a guess? Plug, do you want to... Well, go on, have a guess. So I think it is still Mega Drive, SNES, and... Um, um, Nez and, and Nez, but it's also I think the Game Boy, and also randomly it's, it's a weird thing. I think it's maybe even the it might be Master System or the Game Gear, something weird like that. So I got many, it. Just have a guess. So how many consoles? Yeah, five. Oh, have a guess. How many consoles are on the thing? Five. five. You guess five. It's Rob? Retron Five. It's called Retron Five. You guess five. I was going to guess five, so I'm going to do this one plus or minus thing. Uh, I'm going to say less. <laughs> Two. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say seven. Seven. All right. Rob is closest, right? So we have. I'm going to need two hands for this. We. <laughs> I can only count in hands, listeners. Sorry. So I've got NES, SNES, Game Boy Advance, Genesis, or Mega Drive. It plays Famicom stuff. It plays. Um, actually, I'm not going to count Super Famicom because that's just. Um, different region SNES, so, uh, Game Boy Color and Game Boy. And it has a Master System converter. Ugh. Its own one. So that is, if I count the Master System converter, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Rob wins. And eight I thought we need Kev for those kind of maths, but you did it. Well done, mate. Eight consoles, cause I'm <laughs> counting, I'm counting the SNES as a multi-region thing, otherwise it would be nine. So. That's impressive. And that's how it's got, cause people got all these cartridges lying around. And they're like, how do I play all this thing? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't have a Game Boy anymore. I don't have a, like a SNES anymore. The Retron 5 was a perfect, and it's in HD. It's the, ha- the output is HD because it's all through the emulators. Uh, it's all got, it's clearly, it's got really good upscaling. Again, I can't vouch for it, but people who have got one have said it's amazing at doing that. So the Retron 5, you know, it is, and you say it's, why is it called Retron 5? It's the, it's their, uh, fit, so it's made by, made by Hyperkin, and it's their fifth Retron console. Dylan, mate. It's their fifth Retron Dylan, console. Dylan. It's kind of confusing, though. The, the band five, they actually went with four pl- people towards the end, didn't they? So who, who cares? They should have changed their name to four then. They, well, they, they carry, one of the leads, one of the singers of five left, and they just carried on with five. I mean, that's just bad marketing, isn't it? I mean, Do you think they should have got someone else in to replace him? Uh, they should have asked me, mate. That, you know? cause, no, because you were in the light funky ones. <laughs> <laughs> it was. But you passed away lately. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's a sad story. So Adrian's in the light funky ones. Keith was in... BB Mac. BB Mac, thank you. Uh, I was the Asian guy in Sum 41. <laughs> <laughs> Brown Sound. Brown Sound, uh, that's me. Well, I don't th- I think I was the only one who wasn't in a early 2000s band. That can ever. be my new, that can be my new politically correct Super nickname. Band. So what, can you imagine that Superman joined together? Some 41 mixed with, um. Five and BB Mac and Light Funky ones. Would you, you had listened to that album, Rob? Uh, <laughs> I'd throw it in the bin. <laughs> Chuck in blue as well. Sounds on, terrible. Anyway. Chuck in a bit of another another level, Dane Bowers. We got yourself a Chuck in blue, but yeah. oh yeah, because Darren looks. We used to say Darren looked a little bit like Dane Bowers. Yeah, da- Darren listened to the pod, said Darren, you're in, mate. There you go, Bergen, Bergen, me. There you go. I <laughs> did a bit of uh, Dane Bowers for you. Anyway, so Croydon the, boy, their fifth console. They basically tried a couple of NES consoles in HD. Uh, they tried a retro. There is a retro trio kind of thing as well. So there is a retro on that does those three. And there is, they just tried it, I think, like a SNES, like a SNES only. 
So there's, there's eight, eight consoles. Why could it, they could have called it the Retro Octopus, couldn't they? They could have called it the Retron Octopus. Or the Retro Octopus. I feel like you could have got <laughs> a job at Hyperkin. <laughs> That's a terrible name. But, oh. but yeah. So the, the essence, so again, the, the one thing that hardcore, hardcore retro gamers have, and a lot of our guys back home be like saying the same thing or thinking the same thing, is that it's not an authentic experience. Essentially, you are playing your games, but you're playing sort of, you know, the electronic versions of it via an emulated machine upscaled. <laughs> not really how you used to play it back in the 90s or 80s. Octodrive would probably be a better name, right? Octodrive. Octodrive. Man, I give you a job, you can have a job, and you can have a job. <laughs> Marketing. Right, both of you. Right, so, Retron 5. But, what thought kind of crossed my mind. If you have a big box that's just like a big emulator, why not get a computer that can hold many emulators and also thousands of games? Are you thinking a pie right Are now? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> I'm hungry. I need Are you some, thinking what I'm thinking? I'm hungry. I need some raspberry pie. <laughs> Has anyone actually had a raspberry pie? I don't know. Anyway, um, made by Ed and Upton, um, Eben Upton in Cambridge, actually. Originated here in England. The raspberry pie. We, we've both got a... Re- well, yours is it's pretty loaded, isn't it? Was I the first one to get one of those? You got well? one. Then I think Keith got one. Then I got one and I was like, ooh. Because I was going to get uh, a blank Raspberry Pi and build it. Yeah. Um, I looked up on Amazon, you can get the kit and everything, and I was going to install Retro Treat, um, Retro Pi yeah. and get all the things in. Da-da-da-da. And you're like, that's too much. <laughs> I was like, screw this. Pay £30 more than the kit for a dodgy bloke on eBay. Now that they're so commonplace, for a fully loaded yeah. one with everything on it. Everything. You say everything. Hasn't... Apart from, yours is better because you've got PlayStation stuff. Yeah. Mine only went up to PlayStation N64 and he only put one PlayStation game on it, Crash Bandicoot, mm. and he put uh, two Nen64 games on it. Ocarina... <laughs> Nen64. Nen64. Nen um, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, I think, were on it. They're pretty good hey, games. Yeah. Adrian loves Zelda. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, it's not fair. Everyone loves Zelda. Yeah, <laughs> man, the Diddy Kong Racing. <laughs> anyway, sorry, 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 listeners. Anyway, so, again, me, Adrian, and Keith. Where's Keith for this? I need to get his yeah. kind of, yeah, I need to get his input on this. All have one. We all got one. It's like Poochie. Whenever Keith's not an episode, everyone has to be asking, Where's Poochie? Where's Keith? Where's Keith? Where's Poochie? Exactly. He went up to space or something, or there was a note and some bad animation. I don't think Keith did die on the way back to his home planet. <laughs> okay, I hope he didn't. No, go on. <laughs> Poochie. Don't, don't die, Keith. Anyway, we digress again. What is a Raspberry Pi? Like all I, I said, know, Eben Upton made it. It's made a it. weird little box full of magic, and it's I just plug it into my TV. Magic. <laughs> it's a box full of magic. Uh, friend of the show, listener of the show, Jay from Waffling Tailors, did a lovely... But when I was co- concocting this this idea to do this podcast, he just magically did this nice little article. Because he's bugged you, mate. He's got a bug in this room listening to he's you. He's either bugging me or we are... Bugging. Kind of bugging, <laughs> bugging you. Me, bugging me. Right. I'd, either, yeah, either that or we were Siamese twins at birth and we've been separated. He went up to... Yorkshire and I'm and I'm down here. So I think that's what's happened. Yeah. I think that's probably what's happened. So he did this. I'll put a little link in the show notes. I can have a good read of this. Uh, but he explains a lot of things that I didn't really know about the Raspberry Pi before. So this is good. It's essentially it is a um, he he's put, well the, explains it like this. The brains of the Pi is a Broadcom BCM twenty eight thirty five system on a single chip. It's, and he says it's like having a whole PC motherboard, like this PC down by here, a whole motherboard on one little chip. I don't get it. It's the like, I thought, and I don't know, Dennis Thomas made this, I think pretty sure someone said it's the world's smallest computer. I know you've got like phones and crap and they've got yeah, their own yeah. f- uh, like firmware, but it's the one that actually can work like a computer, like the world's smallest it, one. Um, my so, brain boggles. So why not use it to put on a load of emulators and a load of old games? Yeah. yeah. Before people used to have to, uh, uh jailbreak their Xboxes and. Before, before the RetroPie wasn't, it wasn't, the pies weren't made for that. It was for about like, making your own computers, wasn't it? And just playing it's around with stuff. It's about learning. Learning the whole coding. Point that yeah. Eben kind of led this team to, to make it was what's for his, learning. What's his views on it now that it's been. I don't know. This you think the waffling tailors, 
have almost got an interview with him. He's agreed to it, but I think he had a bit of a family emergency or something, couldn't oh. do it. So I've said, just keep nagging him because I think they're quite like to know, like people mainly use it for old game emulation. How do you feel about that? Let's see. How would you feel about it, Adrian? If you made this thing for education and people like, I'm just going to use it for old gaming. Like I just play my SNES games on it. It's a good question, actually, because I think. I probably think, well, fair play in a way. You know, I'm still selling the products, and they can do what they want. And if they do something weird like that, if they get in trouble, it's not nothing on me, mate. Well, you're a teacher. What if you spent ages and ages and ages uh, making this thing that would help your kids learn, like you know, learn more about business, yeah. and they uh, ended up reaching in it for something like uh, Fortnite or um, something else Pug-G. that kids like these days. PUBG. Is that something secondary school kids like? I don't know. What is PUBG? I don't know what's, but yeah, sorry. Puck a chair. <laughs> I don't know. Dylan won't know. How Dylan would you know. feel if that, that happened? Uh, mixed. mixed. <laughs> you feel mixed. Because, no, in a way, you've got to respect the tenacity of the ideas of taking someone's idea and just going, well, let's try something a bit different with it. But then, right, the core of the product is, you might think, well, it's being a little bit diluted here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would, I would have mixed opinions. Yeah? Yeah. That's fair enough. Anyway, so, so the answer is mixed. Well, I think it will be mixed. Uh, <laughs> it's th- like how I felt when the third pizza turned up. It's like, I've got mixed feelings. Do I take the pizza? I take the pizza. I'm full, but I still take the pizza. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you had taken the pizza, do you think a fourth one would have come along? <laughs> like a, like a, for the eternity. Every, every it just half keeps an hour. going. They just keep on coming. <laughs> Don't stop it. Um, so. Anyway, back to the Raspberry Pi. The the most recent one, I think, is pretty mad that it's all in one little thing. Runs um, the processor in it runs at one point five gigahertz, not as fast as like a desktop thing, but that's mad, isn't it? One point five gigahertz, and you can get four gigs of RAM in it. That's like half of my PC down there. It or they're like a little box, smaller than your hand, smaller than your I hand. Think, you can get that in there. I think he's got it wrong, mate. It's just magic dust. Just it's magic, weird, is magic. It just magic craziness. dust in there. It's not anything. Yeah, but yeah, so. Up, up until the point that I was looking at RetroPies, they couldn't emulate Dreamcast stuff. Ooh, I think it yeah. was kind of the, the kind of the, the cutoff point. I think they'd be able to do so now. I think someone must be able to make it do so now with that. But yeah, so pros. Small. Do you know what, mate? It's so Every bloody different. game under the sun if you want it. Yeah. And, and, and the PS3 controllers are quite nice. They can, they're, they're adaptable. I just whack it in. <clears throat> it sounds bad, Dylan <laughs> and Rob. Just whack it in. <laughs> it does sound bad, but. I could play my NES and SNES many more, but in a way, I'm just like, well, after I play a bit of this game, like Street Fighter, I might as well play other games on the Neo Geo. So I whack it, whack it in and say, let's, let's play a bit of Knights of the Round on the arcade. Mm. I'm not going to play the SNES version, let's be honest. Yeah. And I'll say, I'll say to my son, Tate, let's play a bit of Predator Arcade. Let's do this. We love it. I love, I love the, I love it because you can just easy, just pick and choose so many games. It's how I did my gaming tournament that Rob and Dylan didn't win. <laughs> You had to just <laughs> stick hey, the Hey, we got on the podium. I, I came like last, in. so what can I say? You had to stick the boot. I do in. like that we were represent. There are eight people in this com- contest, by the way. Like, I do like that we represented. We did. Yeah, because if it came well. like the last, that would not be <clears throat> amazing. Do you but- know what? The re- I would have won if it wasn't for Judge Dredd. Oh yeah, that game. Oh, Judge Dredd. Yeah, so one of the games was this blockbuster compilation thing they did for, there was NBA Jam and Judge Dredd. Yeah. And it was like, not great. I got the um, second best score in NBA Jam throughout the entire, like. There you go. Anyway. Anyway. We, we weird lost. version I hadn't played before. Yeah. We, we lost to our mate Dave, who doesn't actually own any consoles. He's just <laughs> got a natural knack for games and I hate him. Anyway, so. <laughs> what, so pros, right? That's pretty much it for the pros. It is there. You can get any game you want. It's you can whack it up to your HD telly, no problem. Yeah. Cons. It doesn't feel like a re- like you're playing a no, retro game console, it, does it's it? It's not quite the same, you're right. And the control like I said, it's a PS3 controller, which is not bad, but it's not the mm. original controllers. Yeah. I got it with dodgy USB like SNES imitation. That's well dodged, man. Yeah. Um there's only certain controllers that are compatible with it, I think, as well. And mapping them is a pain in the butt. Look, have you ever tried mapping like uh, like an other gamepad on the like yeah, not, oh, that's there. a nightmare. I, I, you know what, Dylan? When I play the arcade games, it's fine because you almost expect you're not to play a real arcade. But you're right. When you play the Mega Drive or SNES games, it's not quite the same. It doesn't feel the same. No. The main stuff is really good yeah. because you can just oh, play yeah. like arcade games you never have had a chance of playing, you know, back in the day. So that's good. So it's all about finding an authentic experience, isn't it? 
So I think it's about time, because Rob's got to get his train, to, pyre, to power up. Ba ba bong. Yeah, so the can make a power up noise. Mega SG. Let's see, let's see if it up. Let's see if it turns on. So we've got it all plugged in. We've got the old, I've got my, uh, Mega Drive, EverDrive in there. You Didn't hold it down, little red button. light comes on. Go blue. Then it flashes, it goes off. What? Ta-da! Bum, ba, lum, bum, bum. Here it is. This is the screen. It basically doesn't really work like a Mega Drive at all. It's not, there are, so, this is how I came about this console. Friend of the show, listener of the show, Nathan Ogden. Yeah. Uh, who, who gave, bought one? Who well, didn't give me, but I paid good money. Well, who actually sold? Deal. Yeah, sold Adrian at a very good price. Thirty two X, thirty two X, and everything. Uh, he sold this to me on the proviso that I podcast about it. So pod over. Pod. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I use that just for mate. Nathan. No, so I've got a I've got a knockoff six button uh, joy pad that was previously broken, but I managed to resurrect it. Uh, hooked up to Mega SG. It's also plugged into my Mega CD. Uh, you've got some options on it. So the one that the, the, I think Nathan wanted to downgrade, so he wanted to sell this to me and then use a bit of that money to buy, I think, one of these HD Mega Drives that's knocking about. Yeah. What did he say about that? Because you listened to his comments about it. He said, compared to the Mega SG... It's chalk and cheese. Chalk and cheese. Why is that? Because he said it one wasn't... tastes good and the other doesn't. <laughs> no, he said he said the Mega HD, which he's got, is it called? Yeah, I think it's called was Mega was HD. good. And they're about sixty quid. I sixty think, quid, but the SG is just feels better. I think he said it just it's just much more like the. He said image wise and yeah. output wise on a HD, they are in different like leagues. times, different leagues, different time zones, everything. The Mega SG, yeah, is above and beyond. Well, it's. Well, it's let's League. take a look. Let's take a look. <laughs> yeah. We know how expensive these things are because he had to fork out for the import costs and the, um, da, da, da. I worked out that he saved me something like 60, 70 quid. Cause I was thinking about buying one of these and you look at the cost of it and you're like, what the hell am I doing? He's a good guy that But Nathan. he's a great guy. So and thanks. He's, Nathan. he's not a mug. He's not like he's, we're, you know, he knows that he's given us a good deal. We appreciate he's it. He's no mug. Yeah. Um, one issue with this Everdrive is that it won't play off the bat. So what you have to do is it's got a little built-in game called Ultra Core, which is like a like a Turrican type game. Oh, cool! Uh, you have to play that first. So let's play a little bit of that. Hold on, so put the microphone down for a little bit. How it's random! You got, it is a yeah. You commentate on this one. Really. It's all lowercase at the moment. It says play Ultra Score lowercase. Oh, Ultra Core. I mean, that, yeah, it looks good pretty graphics. good, doesn't it? Look at that. It's a little bit blurry in the big screen, but. <laughs> Rob, you cheeky boy. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a 16-bit game, but you can see, like, there's an upgrade. It just looks, I think it's not blurry, but pixely. I love pixel art, mate. The animation's good, though. Oh, it's got, like, the old parallax in, right? Am I talking rubbish in the backgrounds? Yeah, it's definitely, there's some parallax scrolling in there. So you switch, so if you're in any game, um, or if you're playing this ultra core game, you just hold down start and down, and it goes to this main menu with all the lower cases. Is ultra the lower case. A proper game that was released in Mega Drive. Oh, uh, apparently it was previously unreleased. Ooh. So I haven't had a good go in it yet. So anyway, so let's go back to the EverDrive. Didn't yeah, I can see all the options. Select game, yeah. Actually, what have I got in there previously? Gone, yeah, so. Yeah, um, you're just squ- squiggling through the options here. Back to Ultra Korg. <laughs> Can't escape this bad boy. <laughs> we get, oh, look, it's doing the thing. Ah, so this is one thing. So I've chosen a ROM. I can't remember what ROM I've loaded onto my EverDrive. It says developed for use only with Ooh. NTSC Genesis. Ooh. The good thing about the Mega SG is it actually picks up the region switch. So I will do this now. Region switch on. Dylan is Doing it now. <laughs> yeah, it's like commentating on like, um, I don't know, what, like, oh, here we go. He's, he's switching it on. Uh, you're clicking the NTSC export USA, but there are other options for like Japanese and I'm guessing European. It's like the main not- thing is after you switch the, um, the region, you go back to run cartridge on the main menu and it should, if by magic, Sega. Sega. Yeah, what logos up playing? on the screen. Oh, Dylan was playing. Ranger. Classic. Yeah, a side scrolling shooter, Ranger X. So now Ranger I'm just going to commentate on Rob playing Ranger X. Okay, I don't think I've ever played Ranger X before. 
Are we I f- don't think I have either. Are we fans of Ranger X? So Ranger X is a shoot 'em up where you're a robot and you also have a bike. So you use the um the top buttons to to move around the bike as well and, and shoot and stuff. Oh, yeah. But look at that. So bearing in mind the problems that people have with output of Mega Drive images to HD, how close does that look like? A Mega Drive image to a CRT That's back amazing. in the day. The colours are popping out, mate. You know, it's no blur. I don't think it's any blur. I there love is the, no it's blur. It's crystal clear. Crystal clear. I mean, look at that. And this is a old ROM on a on a on an EverDrive. So it's been upscaled then. So this is the thing. So the Mega SG, you choose the resolution. So I think I've got it set on. So you can have like four eighty, seven twenty, and ten eighty. Yeah. So the telly I've got this linked up to is not, I don't think it's 1080. Um, so I think I've got it set to 720 or 480. But look at that. Just look at it. I'm just going to move the microphone over to Rob for his impressions here. Uh, yeah, looks good. Um, definitely not blur or anything. There's no blur. So the main reason I wanted to get a Mega SG is because my Mega Drive SCART doesn't work with either this HD telly or the one in my front room. doesn't work at all or just so works what happens, really poorly? Yeah, so what happens, and a lot of people find this, is if you've got an original Mega Drive with Mega CD and everything like that, and you scart out to it, what the picture might do is continually flash. So you won't get a solid picture, which obviously you can't, you can't play, you can't do anything with, because the telly can't work out the aspect and everything else. It's kind of trying to work out a million things at once. So you have to composite it out. So you have to composite out the Mega Drive into the back of the HD, so you have to you have to find have to find an old yeah. an old HD telly, and it looks horrific. Everything blurs, everything is like shocking, um, lag, it, it, the lot. Everything is there. So I I love the Mega Drive. You know, I want to yeah, appreciate the Mega Drive for what you should appreciate it for, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And that's it. Yeah, I will say um, even more than the blur. I think the colours come out really well in this. Yeah. The colours, can you see? It's like there is no like. The colours are truly represented how they should have been. Again, a problem I've had with my Mega Drive and Mega CD for years, like since I've had the, the Tower of Half Power. You yeah, know. it's kind of hard for me to make a definitive judgment simply because I haven't played Ranger X on the other stuff. That's true. So if it was a game I was more immediately familiar with, maybe I'd... Shall we sort that thing? out? Do you have enough time? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, uh, Jungle Strike, it's got nice Jungle colours. Jungle Strike? All right, so... What we do is we turn off the Mega SG. We will wait a second. We'll turn it back on. Now, Dylan, you have to say it is an expensive piece of kit. You got a good deal. But it's it is an expensive a lot. piece of kit. You're looking at like two hundred, two hundred billions now yeah. just to get one of these. But it's for people who love the Mega Drive. I'm thinking, like, I'm more and more thinking that it's something that you ha- you have to own. You just have to own it. Can, can, <laughs> so can like, I ask? It's attached to the Mega CD. I assume the Mega CD is... So I will do that. I don't want to keep Rob here. We'll do the Jungle Strike thing with him, and then I'll do the Mega CD thing with you after. So where is it? Jungle, jungle, jungle Strike. strike. Yeah. Here we go. So, do not turn off the system. Lots of exclamation marks. So for, <laughs> <laughs> any EverDrive owner will tell you that if you have it plugged in, because it, it's doing things to the SD card in it, don't touch it. Don't let it turn if, off. If you don't did turn off, what would happen? Well, I think, well, I don't know if it'd corrupt the SD cards. I mean, it's good to take a backup of it just in case it did it. Uh, I don't think it's going to affect the firmware or anything on could there. Could you go to your public library and re download it again off their internet? <laughs> if you're Adrian Wallet, you probably could. <laughs> yeah. So again, you've got to do the same thing with Ultra Core. So do you remember how to get into the menu? Right. I'll uh, leave it to I'll you it. since you're a professional. I do find it with the Ultra Core the, the default game. So it's good that it's on here so that the EverDrives can work. Well, but surely, it, should be Sonic, shouldn't it? Or something like that. Do you mean something people might so, be more yeah, likely like to want to play? So, yeah. so they wouldn't... I think they've managed to get the rights to Ultra Core. Right. They wouldn't have had the rights to anything else. Or it would have cost EA. You couldn't get like an EA game on there. But here, yeah, we've got... Um, in association with, with Mike Posen, Arcade Attack interviewee, um, we are going to get Rob to play some Jungle Strike. So, again, thoughts as we're looking at all of the... Intro Ooh. bits. Yeah. That guy there, Scott Antonio, he looks very similar to a person that hopefully will do an interview with us called um, Tony Barnes. Tony Barnes. He worked on these uh, Jungle Strike games. Jungle yes. Strike games. So hopefully. Rob straight in. I mean, Jungle Strike, I think, looks glorious. There's no, can, you know, like sometimes with output, you kind of get that stuttering screen. No stutter. Have you noticed? Love it. No stutter. 
Look at the sprites. Look at the animation. How's the lag? How's the lag feeling there, Rob? How's it? Is it feeling all responsive? Uh, yeah, I can't feel any lag there at all. Perfect. Look at this. This is why. This is why the Mega SG is here to stay. I'm just trying to like <laughs> picture, just you know, get you no, know, but trying to describe the, the scene. The grass is vibrant. There's no blur. The Retro Trio tried hard, didn't, but it was no way as crisp as this. Playing a Meg, my original Mega, you know, Mega Drive now on my HD TV is not as crisp yeah. as this. It means well, but it just doesn't deliver. Yeah. So do you, do you, do you guys want to know about the technology? The technology in this, mag- in this little thing? Dust. So <laughs> it is, I think a lot of people would know this now, but we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go over it again. So I've lifted this directly from a episode, uh, an issue of Retro Gamer that came, I think, a couple of months ago. So analog, like I said before, um, founded by a gentleman called Chris Barber, I think, off the top of my head. Chris Tarber. Sorry. Tarber. Chris Tarber. Not Faber. Chris Tarber. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the guy, the guy, the guy who built this is a guy called Kevin Horton. So he is the, the main dev and super genius. So he's reverse engineered a Mega Drive. And also they've done, How? they've done lots of other consoles. So this is actually one of their more affordable consoles. Can you believe this? What's so, top of the range? So the top of the range one is, if I find it here, so they've got an NT, the NT Mini. So that's, um, it's like a, they do the same thing for the NES. So just right. NES on its own. Uh, that was $449. Yeah. That's a lot of money, Dylan. That's a lot, $449. I think one of their first ventures was even more than that. Let's see, where is it? There is one here that was $499. I think that was, okay. Again, that is an, an an analog NT, and that's got the NES. That's got NES and cartridge. Uh, well, but NES and Famicom cartridge <laughs> compatibility. I'm kind of trying to read this whilst holding the magazine. Anyway, so it's all to do with something called FPGA. I know it's like people like. Uh, why friend. is it? Uh, sorry, if I can interrupt you. Why is it gone to a weird menu screen in this? Oh, because it because you press start and down at the same time. So if you just press C. C or just back mm. on a C. Okay. On a well, anyway, like I, I can get. I don't need to play that anymore. So I can. Rob has to go anyway. But yeah. So. <laughs> well, no. I was going to say one thing. I think looking at this is interesting. Is it's obviously it's not really anything to do with the machinery itself, but we are playing on a very large TV, mm. much larger than ones I think that we conventionally mm. used, and it is yeah. very mm. pixely. It's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, it's kind of a really cool old style kind of. Uh, uh, yeah, kind of retro it is, look. It? It's all sharp. You can see every single pixel. It is bigger than a lot of the tellies. I would have been playing on like a fourteen inch back yeah, in the yeah, day. True that. So playing on the forty inch is a bit of a <laughs> is a bit of a change. Yeah, but I, I love the uh, the kind of the colours are very very vivid, very like kind of clear and crisp. Do you have to agree mm. with that? Mm-hmm. And I think like this is the kind of look where if I wanted like a, it'd be really cool. I think if there was some kind of like massive level. RPG or kind of like modern mm. Outlook game, but with these graphics, yeah. like kind of really crisp Ooh. colors, good amount, like but kind of really heavy pixels, just oh, would be yeah, a great there look. There is one on the Switch, Rob. Um, oh, is it called Octo Traveler? I might be making that up after hearing about the Octo. But, <laughs> no, but there's one. There is actually one. Quite that sounds recent. familiar. Yeah, I've got it, it's, it's pixely but lovely. Apparently. That's it. It's about embracing the sort of the pixeliness. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, so it's all to do with something called the field. Pixel- Never mind. Field, field programmable gate array technology. That actually sounds familiar. I think I may have written about that at some point. Nice. Um, so like I said, Kevin Horton's behind it. So I'm lifting again this sort of verbatim from Retro Gamer magazine. Uh, so he says, um, he has a long, so they say that he's a long history in the retro gaming scene. Cracked open these consoles and away he goes. So they go, so what does an FPGA do? At its most basic level, an FPGA is a chip that can be configured to behave like other hardware at transistor level. So what that means is that it's actually reading the cartridge. Like when the the Retron 5 would take the game, dump it to the memory, run it from there, the Mega SG, even through this EverDrive, Mm. is playing it through the cartridge. So, because it can do that, it can interact with things like Mega Sade. Can I ask about the 32X? May, May I ask about that? The thirty no oh you I can't ask about we don't no. talk about that you don't talk about that <laughs> so there is there is unfortunately uh, an issue I think they're working on trying to upgrade or something get around it 
But there is additional technology in the 32X, which means it cannot work through it. You cannot play no. 32X stuff through it. Sorry, buddy. Oh. But, yeah, anyway, let's turn off Jungle Strike. So you just hold down the little button again. Do you like, I don't know if you noticed, but the little LED changes color as yeah. you like play games and stuff. So Jungle Strike, it was all kind of green and flashing. And if you, <laughs> well, I was playing, I was playing play something those blue. I was playing, yeah, I was games. playing something with like, well, that was a bit purpley, that maybe like Eternal Champions or something, and it was flashing purple. Well, and you, stuff, are you being serious? I'm actually being serious. <laughs> well, you're joking. Like, I thought it was just something that the console does, but it seemed to like match it. I don't know if that's a feature of it or if I'm just making up in my head. But yeah, that's actually something that it seems to do. So, mm. pretty mad. So again, if you want to play the Mega CD... How would you describe the shape of it? It's about a, a mini. It's the size of a Mega Drive Mini, isn't it? Mega Drive, it is really. It's the size of a Mega Drive Mini. So the actual like dimensions of it, but it's got the, the old cartridge slot in it. So what I'm going to do is just mm. switch the hardware to PAL, because I'm using a PAL Mega CD. So this is something else that Nathan warned me about. Thanks, mate. So it was on. So I've got it saved to Japan. So we'll move it on. PAL regions sure. should do it. And then you also need to turn on CD music, which I think I might have saved. About. Let's have a look. Uh, menu Question here. though, Dills, because there's, there's people listening who might think, do I get maybe get this or do I get like a mini Mega Drive? What's so the opinion? main <laughs> the main difference I think between this and other. Make, like HD Mega Drives is that this is not for like casual gamers. Right. This is not for casual retro gamers, actually. To be honest, um, the reason being is that one, it's bloody expensive, <laughs> and two, it's not plug and play like the other Mega Drives are. So the other Mega Drives, yeah, you basically yeah. just bosh them in, uh, and away you go. But yeah, with this, I've just got to turn on. So there's a secret thing here. Oh, I see the audio is turned on. So of course, Mega CD all about the CD audio. Here we go. Right, we're ready. So you run cartridge. There's no cartridge. And you'll see, you should hopefully see, I'm plugged in the Mega CD. Hold on. <laughs> really <laughs> anticlimactic. If I do this again, run cartridge, the Mega CD should come to life. Ooh. Ooh. Ta-da! So what we're looking at is the Mega CD screen. That's good, isn't it? So it's already working. Have I actually got anything in it? So you press the re, you got, a, um, there's a reset button on the SG that works like the reset button on a Mega Drive. Ta-da! Oh, I've got Sil Silpede in it, which Oi. is actually one of the more erratic titles for this, but let's give it a go. Let's give it a whirl. Let's give it a go, because I want to show Adrian this. Nothing like the uh, usual hardcore prep, huh, Dil? <laughs> I love my hardcore prep, dude. But like I said, this was like a this was a live thing. It's, it's it, yeah. you know, it's it's we, hey, new world. There's gonna be teething problems. What can I say? But you will see. So Mega CD games were never really that sharp in the day, were they? Blurry I'm gonna blurry. blow your mind. I'm gonna Dave blow your mind. Style. <laughs> I'm gonna blow your mind with this right now if it works. Silpies is a bit is a bit more erratic than. Than other games I've got with this, but I'll pass it on to Adrian. Erratic how? Erratic in as it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't even do that. So it's loading on the original, the initial logo screen. So that's good. So let's let's enjoy the dulcet tones of Silpede. Or Adrian's gonna. Have you ever played Silpede before? I've spoken many times about Silpede, and I love it. I love it. But um, doesn't seem to be working. There you go. Told you. Erratic. So what we'll do. Is we do have Ground Zero Texas here, which I think Keith got me for my Secret Santa. I haven't! So this is why, this is it, this is it, this is the litmus test. Right, so, here we go. You know, uh, I was on the other side of the room, no one could hear me asking you if you've played it yet, when you answered that. Oh no, um, could you rephrase, could you repeat the question? So, are you looking forward to playing Ground Zero Texas? Yes, because I've never played it before on this, on this, on this. Here we go. So Adrian's going to press start on the old yeah, button there. Okay. I mean, this is not your usual podcast, is it? This is um, <laughs> us kind of mumbling a lot and saying, oh, the Mega SG is amazing. But here it comes. With Ground Zero Texas. Rob's going to say something poignant. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, maybe <laughs> we'll, uh, maybe we'll, can we'll this think type of about <laughs> doing podcast. this again next time. <laughs> um, backup RAM is full. Don't need to worry about that. Press start. There we go. So here we go. This is Mega CD output on a HD TV. Mm. I'm excited. I mean, I'm excited. I mean, it's grainy as crap, isn't it? But, but, but that's not the Mega SG's fault or the HD. It's literally, it's putting that out. Rob's off. Bye, Rob. 
<laughs> with, with, Bye, Rob. Bye, Rob. But yeah, he was Grand Zero Texas. There's a bit of FMV there. So we actually play, press, press start and like start the old, cause it's a FMV game. So we're gonna enjoy a lovely bit of FMV. Press and start, but it's, I think you have to watch it. Here we go. Ground Zero Texas. Ground Zero Texas is all very kind of sci-fi. Impressed? Very impressed, mate. Impressed. We're still watching this lovely FMV. I, Look, dude, it's a ha- Mega CD working on HD with no, no stutter, no color bleed. How are you feeling about this right now? I, I want to actually play the game. Why is it not actually letting you go to pass the thing there? Yeah, when you press start, it goes to weird sort of pause menu. Oh, here we go. During, okay, it's pausing. Okay, you have to watch this. I think okay. you have to watch it, yeah. Pretty good though. It's telling you about stuff. It's another Tom Zito game. He's done a lot of Mega ZD stuff. Good old Tom Zito. Was trying, <laughs> trying to get on the po- uh, pod or getting a text into you one day, maybe. But yeah, so Mega C, uh, Mega SG. One bit of hardware I wanted to talk about actually before I realised Rob was going to miss his train. It's something called the GPDXD. You seen this? No, I never heard, heard about it. this. It looks like a 3DS, mate. So another part of Jay's article on retro devices focuses on this little thing, which is essentially an Android tablet. Yeah, so it's an Android tablet. Stuck onto a, a gamepad. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you feeling this? Right, so I'll give this to Adrian. Yeah, if I had to describe it, it does look similar to a 3DS. Cause it's, uh, it's, or a com- DS. it's completely modelled on a 3DS. So I no was playing... Thing. Where's this Lotus... I think I was playing Lotus 2 earlier. Let's get in a game that Adrian would know. It's quite a snazzy looking thing, mate. Like a black so the clamshell. <laughs> the GPDXD is a funny thing, because when it comes, it's got some really dodgy kind of Chinese emulators on it. <laughs> but because it's an Android tablet, yeah, 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 you, can. you can just go on Google Play. You'd have to log in using your Google account details, but you can just go and get your own emulators on there. So I've got a me- I've got a Master System emulator on there. It doesn't work so great, but this is a great little kit. So a, a great little piece of kit. There's a, I've heard there's a BitBoy. I tried to get like a, some kind of BitBoy stuff, but this I, I've got this. So I'm, unless until I sell this, doesn't mean I can't really get that other one. NBA. Look, I put a bit of NBA Jam on. There you go. Forget Ground Zero Texas because they're talking about some waffle, but I've kind of proved that the Mega SG worked good with that. Uh, they were about a hundred and, about 120 quid when I bought them. So they're a bit cheaper now. You can get them people trying to get rid of, get rid of them for about 50, 60 quid. Yeah. There's a two gigahertz processor in there. Uh, it's got two gigabytes of RAM. So not as much as the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it runs at Android 4.4.4. And that one is the 32 gig version. So you can actually, and you can, you can attach external stories to it, but I don't need it. It can emulate quite well up to about Dreamcast N64 PS1 standards. It can get PSP stuff on it, but the PSP stuff does not work very good. If, you, if, if you get good sort of quick PSP games, you, it, it doesn't work. You can might play well like just... Nintendo stuff on it then. Yeah. So you can get, if you go back, I've downloaded loads of, on this, this happy chick emulator thing, which I think may, may contain lots of malware. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can, look, I've downloaded loads oh, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Star Fox, yeah. Unfortunately, no Zelda stuff. Sorry, dude. I know. Did you die in Ground Zero Texas already? <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention. Mate. <laughs> but yeah, so that is my kind of quick roundup, uh, and review of the Mega SG. I think the Mega SG is totally worth the money. If you're a retro gaming aficionado uh, and you don't mind forking out megabucks for for things that will give you lots of pleasure, then then that's the way to go. Um, yeah. Adrian, final thoughts on any of these devices? Mega SG, blah blah blah. Well, I I think brilliant. You know, because the old consoles weren't built for HD TVs. No. We mentioned last week on the Ico Pod that Ico doesn't. It, I mean, it's a great game, but it doesn't look brilliant on HD TVs. It's no. not what it's supposed to be. Um, it looks blurry as hell, man. Blurry as hell. I've tried different things to get my PS2 looking better. It's hard. So mm. any way of making the original consoles back to the life they used to have, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. You know, and let's be honest, Sega aren't losing money. It's not like they're still selling Mega Drives. No. You know, so the Mega SG is a per, you know, I suppose you could, you could argue mm. it could take away from the Mega Drive Mini sells a little bit, yeah. but I do agree with you. It's more for the hardcore gamers who really want the best of the best. It is, but you raised a good point there because the old hardware needs servicing, and like our like our friend Ergen says, yep. or Simon, he says that with the with the Mega SD, egg, the, with the the EverDrive, the Mega the, the CD EverDrive that we talked about a few months ago, with that 
it because it replaces the Mega CD, you don't have to worry about servicing it. It saves mm. it, it's way more expensive than one, but it saves you those costs in the future. This Mega CD here, as beautiful it is, that's not going to. I don't know how many more years that's going to last. I can keep on getting him to service it, but how you know if I the 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 kind of the the dream team is to have a Mega SG with the Mega SD in it as well. So you've got you can have all of those games. And all of those mega CD mega. games, and play them, you know, play them forever. You can play them forever and ever and ever. Well, only until you kick to. But <laughs> I'd love it if they did a, a, some sort of Amiga one. Can you imagine like an oh. Amiga SG, where it's? I know it'd be difficult because you still need a keyboard, really. But I'd love that proper. I'm gonna give a quick mention to the Amiga then. So a couple of years ago, I think I might have mentioned this in a couple of pods before. Um, but the Amiga is a, a Spanish Spanish yep. dev team. Engineered a Android yep. Amiga device. They improved it so it plays AGA stuff. So you can actually switch between uh, A500 and A1200 whilst you're running the thing. Good. And it outputs the HD brilliantly. I was playing like Speedball 2 on it the other go. day. I was playing Cannon Fodder and stuff. It was fantastic. So I don't know if they sell those anymore, but if you want an Amiga, what Adrian's talking about, um, it's slightly rough around the edges, but it's only about hundred pound, I think. It was. You have to show me, mate, when I come around one day. I soon. will actually. We'll so do, we'll do another thing. But the uh, yeah, little a little tip of the tip of the cap to uh, to the Amiga. But guys, get on all of this. There are loads of other consoles, Pi devices. Emulator devices. I mean, Kit- Kitty Box and the Jaguar, that's similar in a way, isn't it? It's supposed to bring your Jaguar's HD quality. So the Jaguar, oh, oh, oh. we have Sorry, to mention the Jaguar at some point. <laughs> but the Jaguar, horrific picture to yeah. HD, but with a Kitty Box. Which is about 100 euros, let's 100 be honest. euros. But I'm kind of tempted. Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot of money. I think everyone's tempted. But again, I think with a SCART and then a SCART HDMI converter, you may, if you're lucky, if you get the right combination, you might be able to get a decent picture out of your Jaguar. Yeah. So I think all of this is really about us trying to, ca- you know, get that feeling of what, you know, how we used to play it back in the day, how glorious it was. Hasty tellies have struggled with these of late, but there are options for you. And depending on how much money you got, you can either have uh, one of these Raspberry Pis or Retro Trios. Or you can go without eating for a couple of months like I've done and get a mega SG. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. We really hope.